the late and great Miss Sophie Tucker. Here are her stories. Sophie Tucker was one of the most extraordinary entertainers in American history. Her style, wit, and personality kept her in the spotlight for over five decades. An iconic mix of self-parody and racy comedy punctuated by her jazzy musical style became the backbone of her lasting popularity. never forget the way she sang. She is the most underrated jazz singer that ever lived. She was the star attraction. People would come to see Sophie Tucker. She was the last of the Red Hot Mamas. And if he's all there in his silk pajamas, why, he can have the best of all the Red Hot Mamas. No one but the right man can do me wrong. From the 1880s to the 1930s, America was all about vaudeville. When Tucker gets to New York City, the manager thought she was too ugly, so she agreed to do it in blackface. Singers who had the greatest power in their voices were called coon shouters. There were many people who were not unto themselves racist who indulged in putting on the burnt cork because it was so much an accepted part of society that people didn't perceive it as being anti-colored. In 1929, Al Jolson was the biggest entertainer in the world. At the same time, Sophie was the biggest female entertainer. In vaudeville, a lot of people sang songs very much on the beat. I want a girl. A jazz singer would sing. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime pal. Right from the beginning, Sophie had technique with her voice. She picked up on hesitation when nobody else was doing hesitation. My extraordinary man, I mean, my extraordinary man. Thank you, Thank you. In 1922, Sophie needed to replace her piano player. She came to Ted Shapiro. The first night, she was all set to let me go, give me the pink slip, and I'd be fired. But she never gave me notice. After about three or four weeks, she never said a word to me. I went into her dressing room and I said, Ms. Tucker, I had the feeling that you were not satisfied with me. And in her usual sort of brusque voice, she said, Oh, I'll let you know later. Well, that later went on for 46 years. She was a Jewish woman alone in a business where women did not prosper. What she had to overcome is what makes her so fascinating to us. What she did paved the way for women of today. Sophie was a fat woman. Now here she is going into show business, and most of the women in this business were attractive, and that wasn't Sophie. Listen, all you thin folks. I don't want you to laugh, but Sophie must get fat. I don't want to get thin. You can laugh and you can grin, but I'm doing very well the way I am. Sophie was able to say things and get away with things that most women couldn't say and couldn't get away with. In the Sophie Tucker School, for Red Hot Mamas, where we'll teach what every girl should know. The art of making love, how to get a man, how to hold him. For the first time, women were lined up to hear Sophie's new message that women can crave sex too. And all the women who know is a hidey hole. Hot shot, no. The Georgia diggers all. When Prohibition started, gangsters took over the nightclubs. So if Selfie wanted to work in nightclubs after 1919, she had to get along with the mob. Oh, yeah, she knew Capone very well. After she got through working, she'd go back to the hotel where Al lived. And they played cards till 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. Tucker definitely had a special relationship with the head of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover. Hoover was not married. Clyde Tolson allegedly was his companion. 
One night in Washington, D.C., J. Edgar Hoover came to see Sophie Tucker. Hoover leaned over and said, by the way, Sophie, when you're done with that dress, can I have it? J. Edgar Hoover is a cross-dresser, and he wanted one of Sophie's dresses. She said, you'll never get into it. <laughs> Sophie was loved by some of the most powerful people in the world, including many U.S. presidents. Warren Harding, Woodrow Wilson, Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt, and John F. Kennedy. Sophie said it best, no matter who, they all love Tucker. When they look at me, my heart begins to float. Then it starts a rocking like a motorboat. Oh, 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 I never knew any boy like you. In World War II, Sophie didn't go overseas. What she did do was tell the guys to write to her. One particular guy was a Jewish kid. His favorite record was My Yiddish Mama. Somewhere he got it in his head, he was going to beat Hitler and his boys, take his record player, and play this record in the streets of Berlin. Unfortunately, when they were miles away from victory, he got killed. They kept his record player, and when they got to the Brandenburg Gate, her record was blasting. Oh, I know. In the early 50s, Sophie went down to Miami to play Copa City. But while she was there, trouble was brewing with the person coming before her. Her name was Josephine Baker. She was an American, but is a star in France. Miami was in the Deep South. There were still problems with segregation and Ku Klux Klan. There were death threats. Sophie found out about this. She went, right to the press and told them that she planned to introduce Josephine Baker on opening night. And if they wanted to bomb Copa City, then go right ahead and bomb me too. It opened, it wasn't an incident, and Sophie had a friend for life. Sophie shared the spotlight with the greatest entertainers of the 20th century. She worked in every new medium as they evolved, from vaudeville, nightclubs, Broadway, and records, After you've gone and left me crying, to radio, gone, movies, no and television. Miss Sophie Tucker. This is television. You're supposed to stand between the chalk marks. Are you kidding? There isn't enough chalk made to go around Tucker. <laughs> And that's just a taste of the tale of Sophie Tucker, a colorful life story that's not to be believed. Go ahead and applaud the old girl. She's dead, but she is not forgotten.